friends, welcome to another Studio Sundays where I interview creative thought leaders, artists, and professionals in the industry about their stories to success. I'm your host, Gianna Andrews, and this week I interviewed Morgan Zion. Morgan is not only an amazing artist and muralist, but also a wellness coach and a badass yoga instructor. I'm not even sure how she does it all seeing as she runs two full-time businesses. So in the interview, I ask her, what are your secrets? Tell me everything. During our conversation, it just became really clear how much light and brightness and positivity Morgan brings to every space that she's in. And now it is on my wish list officially to make it to one of her yoga retreats that she does worldwide. So there's a lot to glean from this conversation with such a wonderful human. And I hope you enjoy the interview as much as I did. Little disclaimer is that there are some audio moments that are less than ideal in this episode that I did not realize during the recording process. However, the conversation is still so wonderful. I hardly think you're going to notice, but just wanted to make that known. And with that, let's dive into it. Morgan, welcome to Studio Sundays. I'm happy to have you here. Happy to be here. So you are based in the Seattle area, right? Yes. Yes, I'm in Seattle. Um, I live in this little pocket called Queen Anne. And um, I lived in Capitol Hill for a really long time, which is a kind of our very eclectic art uh, music scene area. And then I moved to Queen Anne after the pandemic. And um, so, yeah, just been chilling here doing art, enjoying the days of sunshine we get, which are few and frequent, but (laughs) are few and the far in between, but soak them up anyway. Totally. This time of year has been, Mm -hmm. it's like March, I feel like end of February, March, where we're like, okay, I'm I'm ready for the spring. Like the birds are out, the days are getting, yeah, it's like, I'm a sun person, but we still love this area and you know, it's a great place to live. Got to enjoy it when the sun is out. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Have you always lived in the Seattle area or where are you from originally? No, I'm from California. Um, I'm from like a, a little, it's like right in between um, Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. It's called Ventura and I grew mm-hmm. up on the beach there. And uh, we moved up to Washington, Seattle area when I was like probably almost starting high school. And so I, you know, we, we have tons of family. Um, in California and Australia and um, and Hawaii, so just been a beach kid my whole life. You know, sunshine. So moving up here was really weird um, for us because there was just no beach. But so I got into sports instead, and and that's kind of how I was able to stay alive. And then that became a, a whole nother world. But um, but I still travel to California all the time. I do a lot of art out there still. Um, yeah, so definitely like similar to your art we are ocean people you know mm-hmm. ocean sunshine like surf vibes and um, so regardless of where you live you can still find it in your art which I always thought was interesting I'm like oh if I can't have that world and step out every day into it I can create it in my mind and I can create it with my art so it was always a really um therapeutic way to bring the sun back to myself you know what I mean oh I love that yeah no I yeah. mean I, I feel like I've experienced that in my own way too of like when I did get that injury and used painting, I used art as like a way to express and experience the things I love to do, which was like being outside, even though I was like stuck Mm -hmm. in my parents' living room. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Right. That's a great, that's, that's totally right on track. That's the way I feel too. It's like a little vacation that you just get to take yourself on and like, but you're still sitting in one area. So Mm -hmm. what's kind of kept you in the Seattle area since, since you've, you know, entered your career um and everything like yeah. you haven't you haven't moved back to California though even though you are still a beach person there must be something keeping you here right that's a great question um I, I actually traveled a ton after college um I went uh to Eastern Washington University I played soccer there and and uh and I actually got a uh athletic scholarship I was going to be a dentist and long story short uh after two years of dental school I was like I do not think I want to do this you know I would I'm, I'm not doing anything that I'm passionate or artist, like artistically inclined to do. And I wanted to, um, I just wanted to see if there was anything else out there. So I remember going to my counselor and being like, you know, what are the options? What is, 
how can I get a job right out of school and like, you know, really enjoy what I'm doing. And they offered all these different solutions. And one in particular was called um, visual communication design, which is the modern day user experience. So got a degree, uh, I pivoted, got a degree in user experience, well, visual communication design in uh, a full BFA, and then got a job right out of school in web programming and um, and web design. And then that became app design, and then that became user experience, and then that became creative direction. And throughout all of that, I was, um, was also teaching yoga so I kind of have this like two-part world um and so everything was in Seattle because tech was booming I was getting like I always had a really great job and um each job became um just just helped me amplify my career but I was also teaching yoga and building this like really wonderful community of friends and um and just you know the, the love for being around others and so that was a very Seattle thing so as much as I loved the beach, I would travel all the time to go see family and friends, but I would always come back because this is where my community was. Uh, 2018, I wanted, I decided I was like, you know what, I just want to practice. I just want to focus on my yoga wellness um, business. Like if I just quit corporate for a couple years and just try this out, maybe it would like take off you know maybe I could actually make it into a career let's just if I never if I never try I'll never know and um and art was always in the background just because in my head I was like that's not a real job so you know in my head also being a yoga teacher was not a real job in my head though I was a yoga teacher mm-hmm. and so I did that and it started working out really well and then the pandemic hit and so within that I was like oh my god now I'm really trapped what do I do um, and so I was like, I'm just going to move to California, forget this place, forget all this noise. And what's crazy is every time I would leave, I would always come right back because there's always my community bringing me back into this place. And, and, you know, they become your heart. The sun is one thing, like the sun will always be like wherever you go, but your people always bring you back to where you belong because that's your heart. So oh, I love that. Yeah. So that's why I stay yeah. yeah, but we'll get into my story totally. a little bit later. But that's really like the essence of it is that the people are my heart here. So yeah, you know. and that's so important to like build a community takes time. And when once you've mm-hmm. found that, it's like that it doesn't really matter where you are as long as you're with the totally. people that matter Absolutely. to you. And I feel like that's that's so huge that you've found that. And especially in this day and age when everyone's like, I feel like we're more separate than ever in some ways, like behind screens and just working yeah. remote. And especially as an artist or an entrepreneur um, in all your endeavors, it's so important to have those people around you and supporting you. So Absolutely. that's really awesome that you found that. Yeah. So you were kind of going back a bit. You were, um, or you were a soccer player in college. Mm-hmm. How did you find yoga and wellness? Um, mm. Or was that was that with you beforehand? Or how did that, that kind of translate like being an athlete into yoga and wellness? Yeah, great question. I was um, go hard or go home for like my whole life, very like aggressive and competitive. And my sophomore year of college, or it was my last, yeah, the like the last quarter of my sophomore year, I tore my ACL and um, I had to rest for the first time. I'd never been injured like that before. I had full reconstructive knee surgery. And um, I had to learn how to rehab and recover. So they made me take a yoga class in, for, for recovery. And I was like, oh my God, I have to take a class. You know, it's like a college credit class. And I was, in my head, the way I approached it, I was like, this is a waste of my time. Like the sooner I can get done with this and check it off my box, the sooner I can get back on the field, you know? And what's crazy is that that was not the experience I actually had. The experience I had was that I did not know how anxious and stressed my mind and my body were until I was still. And once I was still and not running and not trying to do things, I was like, you know, I had to, I had to face it. I had to confront it. And it made a lot of difference in how I approached things rather than just being reactive. I became a little bit more um, centered really. And so that stuck with me. Not that I was perfect, not that I was fixed right away or anything, but after I had come into the workforce post-college, I 
started feeling that sense of like being amplified in my anxiety and really like constantly in competitive and aggressive nature for myself. And I was like, when did I feel like I was able to, you know, calm down? And I came back to yoga. So I started taking yoga classes here in Seattle. And um, that was really how I started diving into it. And after years and years of practice and traveling around the world, taking workshops and, you know, getting training, I, I decided I'd finally want to become a teacher. So once I got my um, teaching certification, I started teaching in tandem. And that was really when it started becoming like part of my life. Well, it could be, it was a part of my lifestyle before, but then it was really mm. integrated, you know? So mm -hmm. it's kind of like the practice what you preach. So it kept me accountable, you know, because I knew that I was helping myself and helping others. And that was, that felt really good. And where did you get your mm -hmm. training? I got my training here in Seattle, um, my <laughs> first training. And then I trained in uh, Miami and Australia um, and a little bit in New Zealand. And I've trained all over the world now, but my first training was here in Seattle and that's where I got my first uh, teaching gig. And then um, that's, that's just kind of like sent itself into a lot of different directions since. Um, but, uh, you know, for anybody who ever wants to get started in their, um, in their wellness journey, it's just like, I think about it, whatever has helped you get through a really tough time and that you constantly come back to will help others it's not a like one size fits all but the idea that somebody can share their story and it impacts somebody else enough to get them out of their hole is like such a beautiful thing right so if it's yoga or if it's breathing or if it's meditation or whatever it may be there's always some way to use your own practice and what you learn to, to help somebody else and that's um that's what I think about when it comes to wellness. That's why I'm so happy to get to do it. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate you saying that. And I think like, it sounds like you were able to share your experience and what helped you with right. others. And that's what further developed it. Um, yeah. And I'm curious, like, so you're still teaching yoga now and mm -hmm. doing, yeah. and what's kind of your wellness. So you're a wellness coach as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I had always, I had talked about art a little bit um, before how it's always been a part of my life. Since I was a kid, I was always been drawn, but um, I didn't consider that it would be a job. Like I was like, I was trained, you know, brought up like being an artist is like, you, you're a starving artist. That's just how it goes. And, um, and you don't get taken seriously. Right. So it was like, I was always creating paths that I could, um, I would still create every day. Like I have a drawing, morning drawing routine. So I was always drawing. And people knew that I was artistic and I knew that I liked, I was an artist and I would paint and I would do stuff, but it wasn't like my job. So going into yoga as it's full time, as a full time um, uh, job, right? In my head, I'm like, okay, business owner, um, wellness coach, uh, you know, corporate yoga how can I build this into like a real thing so it's like I'm taken seriously right and all along I was still painting and drawing and doing all this stuff and not thinking that I could also be as um uh, as stable with wellness as a business owner and art as a business owner so um I would say I started really capitalizing on my wellness coaching and um and being a corporate uh corporate leader in wellness and that was like my big thing, right? But interestingly enough, everybody always finds out more about me and they find the art side and they're like, oh, I'd like to tap into that as well. So what fed my clientele uh, around my art was also my clientele for yoga. So, which is really interesting, right? They kind of like, that's who I am at the end of the day. I am wellness, I am art. And so, um, so now, yeah, I'm a, a half, uh, I would say, full, well, if you can be, you can be two full-time things. I'm full-time wellness coach, business owner, um, and a full-time um, artist muralist. So uh, that's, that's kind of how I'm doing things. I need a whole team now. <laughs> totally. Well, feel. that's what I was thinking when I was like, oh my gosh, like clearly you're so talented. Yeah. You have amazing Thank art. You. You also like, I looked, then I went and looked at your yoga Instagram page and you're like mm -hmm. an amazing yogi 
and like so Same. strong. And I'm like, how does she do it all? Like I'm a, a full time <laughs> artist and I don't know how you <laughs> do two businesses. Okay. So how long have you been doing art full time? Mm -hmm. since the, well since the pandemic actually okay. so great great question um that's kind of why i alluded to it in the beginning it's such a pivotal point in my career so people had known 2018 i went full-time into yoga and wellness and then the pandemic hit right 2019 whatever uh 2020 so i had barely even got off the road like i, I it ended the year starting my business 2018 so 2019, I'm like, all right, hitting the ground running, let's do it. And then 2020 comes the pandemic, right? Wellness, yoga, all of that, it was in person, one-to-one -one clients, uh, corporate yoga is all, you know, business, everybody's at work and coming in and teaching classes. I'm teaching all these studio classes and now I have zero, zero. Yeah. That was freaking scary. So I had to pivot and put things online, but it's just not the same. So I'd have... Uh, I here in Seattle, like I said, it, uh, this is my community, right? So people are aware that that's changing my world, right? And so the people who knew that I was, not that I was struggling, I wasn't saying anything about it. I was thinking to myself, like, how can we create something now? How can we do something to, okay, pivot, let's go. Like, let's, let's build, let's create. And what's interesting is I started drawing a lot more because I'd have time in between doing like, zoom sessions and i was home you couldn't go anywhere you couldn't do anything you can't go to the gym you can't go to a cafe and draw like nothing so i started doing projects at home and i was starting to create and, and i was posting every day because i would just be in the zone and um, some of my uh, students and clients started seeing things on my instagram and reached out to me because they're business owners here in Seattle. And we're like, hey, my building is boarded up. It would be really cool if you could come and like eat on it. Would you be interested in doing that? I was like, okay, I got some time after I'm done with my sessions. I basically have like the whole day. Like, why not? So I started painting murals um, from my students and my clients in Seattle, which turned into another one, which turned into another one. And by you know, the end of the year, I had done almost 15, maybe more uh, murals on billboards or on uh, boarded up buildings in Seattle, which turned into clients in LA, which turned to clients in West Hollywood and Venice and all along the West Coast. And then eventually turns into the East Coast. And it, it's like the craziest thing because I didn't see that coming, right? Mm. In my head, I'm like, this isn't a real business. And suddenly I'm being paid a pretty decent amount of money to do these murals and I and I still I still to this day I'm like why would you pay me to do that like I don't understand that. I'm like you know I'll like, just do it for free I like it so much <laughs> right right and it's yeah. not even just that as much as mm. it's like the value of your own like like recognizing your own value your own worth to me has been it's almost like the the imposter syndrome you know it's like this isn't a if I hadn't been able to take this job seriously in my own head then how am I going to take it seriously when I'm actually doing it as a profession? Like I, that, that was really, really hard for me to overcome in my own head. Um, mm -hmm. So, so as I started doing more and more of it and started getting better understanding the process, because you've done murals before, it's not really that easy, actually. There's a lot of planning, a lot of prep, um, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things that you go into it that you, sometimes you just don't even plan for you're like yeah there's oh, so the many heck? variables so many variables you're like oh yeah. no I just learned something brand new today because mm -hmm. I never would have thought that could have happened and here we are you know so yeah um you know you're experimenting on a regular basis just learning how to do the job so that became you know that was 2020 so yeah. 2024 it's been about four years of doing art as a full-time gig while doing the yoga full time. And what's interesting is I have really struggled to be enough of, uh, you know, have enough time and mm -hmm. um, and enough like, uh, folk, well, I would say more focused time than anything because art requires so much focused energy. You can't, for me, I, I can't break and move on to the next thing and then come back to it. It takes me a lot of time to get in zone um so so with um my yoga business having clients 
stacked all throughout my day in random times and classes and workshops and all these things was not it was not helpful as I came back into um the the yoga full-time workforce after another pandemic I brought things back into real into person in 2022 I think um mainly 2023 I really dove back in because I was doing art pretty much um all in person that was like my majority of the time so I'd have all my clients in the morning and after 12 no yoga no wellness no planning no nothing everything was art devoted and 2023 I opened up my books a little bit to try and get my yoga business going again here in Seattle and 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 globally and what I found is that my art was starting to suffer again so then last year I cut it off in I think it was uh March and I'm like this year is the year for art so I'm not I'm I'm cutting off doing anything beyond 12 o'clock and if I get any jobs that I really want to take that are art focused like murals big projects I'm going to take them and and my wellness programs are going to have to take a pause and take a back seat past what you know past 12 o'clock so I, I, I intentionally write these things down so I'm not random, you know, so nobody's like, like pulling on me. I'm just like, nope, if that's the direction I choose, that's the direction I choose. I shut everything else down. Um, and, uh, and so I did that last year and I came back um, from doing a, like a month long project in California. It was a, I think it was uh, 3000 square feet. It was like a, a whole tunnel in a shopping center. And um, after I had finished that project, which took about three weeks and a little longer because they had hired me for other things, I was so, I was just really happy to focus only on that. It was so refreshing just to not have to break for anything else, no other yoga stuff, no, like my, my, my efforts weren't divided. But when I came back from that, I was like, oh my God, I have, I like, I have to face you know, everything I left behind. And what I realized is that when you leave stuff behind, you have to build it up again. It doesn't just stay paused. It's not sitting where it was left. It depreciates. It needs love. It needs life. It needs to be taken care of. Otherwise, you have to work super hard to get it back to where you left it. And so this year has been the year of not taking full time into art and building my yoga business back up again Mm -hmm. um and and getting my community strong and and feeling supported and so art has has had to take a little bit of a back seat because I just don't have the same amount of time Mm -hmm. so at the end of the day uh I I started writing this down in January I was like I need a team I can't do it by myself I'm just one person so I started hiring people to teach some of my corporate classes and so I built up my, um, my in, in April, actually last year, I built up um, a, a group of yoga instructors that I trusted that I could hire. So then I created this little side business and because um, I was going to be gone for so long. And now I've actually been building them up even more um, into my teacher training so that I'm able to like monetize and scale that and not have to be the only one doing it. And then for art... I started hiring um, like a like an assistant. So instead of taking a month on a project that was huge, I could hire somebody to come in and help me with some of the things like double coding because or triple coding sometimes because I, I'm only one person and I can get it done pretty quickly. But if I have to double and triple code things and I have to do all the prep and all the, that, that's just like, is that, do I need to do all that stuff? Is that mm-hmm. really the most important stuff for me to do? Because if I need to keep my balanced efforts, like my yoga business and my art business as a business owner at the same level, no, I can't do everything. It's a lot of work to even delegate to people. I don't know if you found is. that, yeah. but like it I've, is. I've had somebody working in house. Um, I had someone in house for several years, different kind mm-hmm. of employees, helping ship my orders. Cause I was very like, kind of like product heavy and everything was shipping from here. Nothing was being drop shipped. And then I switched to drop shipping, but now I have like a virtual assistant mm. uh, that handles all that stuff 
virtually and like helps with the emails and the inbox. Cause once you kind of get a business rolling too, you can, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm imagining you with like your two businesses, you have your, like, you probably have like two different emails, your wellness email, your art yeah, email, yeah. Mm-hmm. and just keeping up with the basics. Like, I don't think people that don't run a business realize how much time it takes mm. behind the scenes. And I've found in my own art business that the bigger my business gets and like the bigger projects gets, the more time I'm spending on the computer um, trying to get everything organized, maybe like mm-hmm. designing. I'm not actually like doing the thing. So it's like, right, right, totally. like, I feel like it sounds like your journey. You've gone through this process of like you, as you evolve, you have to like reclaim your energy, reclaim your creative time, oh reclaim what works for you. And it's really impressive. You've kept both going um, this whole time. Like I honestly, it is just because it sounds like they both feed different parts of you. Mm-hmm. Have you ever considered or is there one of one of the two like yoga or art that you're leaning more into or that you'd like to spend more of your time on? Or does it feel energetically like a 50-50 split? That's a great question. You know, I do feel different every year. And um, I've noticed like last year, like I said, I felt this polarizing need to dive full into art and energy. I did not get that same energy or feeling for my yoga community. I was just like, I need, I need to have the time with art. I need it. And this year, I feel like I need the time to dive into my community. I need to build. Um, and maybe that feeling is because I gave so much to art last year that I need to give more to yoga this year. And then next year, it might change again, you know. And um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with finding the balance. But to your point about having a virtual assistant and having ways to delegate and not be the one doing all the admin work, um, those are things that I've been looking into as well this year for both businesses. And it's hard because there's there's like a similar to how I was saying about, you know, when you divvy out um, when you divvy out responsibilities when it comes to say a mural or something or which classes you're gonna teach or, you know, the quality changes so much when your hands are in it, but there are other things too that, that sometimes it's okay, that if the quality isn't there. With that double coat, for instance, that was like a game changer or like prepping the wall, game changer. I'm like, hire someone else to do it. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I am not that good at pa- I am no better than the next person at painting a wall white primer, okay? Yeah. Like what if I could spend that time and give it to something else like in that amount of time that it took to paint this 3,000 square feet white and prime it and prep <laughs> it, could I have been spending that time diving into my programming for yoga? Mm-hmm. It's like, would I pay myself back because mm-hmm. the energy cost of not giving energy to my other business is like greater than the money that I would spend just hiring somebody else to do that same thing the double coding thing is so in my head because this last project that I had there were some areas there's some colors that took three to four coats and I had the prime and paint uh bare so it should not be the case I was like I don't know how prime and paint is looking like it needs more but you can't do anything about it it has to get done and, and that was when I had a breaking point it was like it needed to happen I think the universe was like oh you don't think you need someone well how about mm-hmm. we just give you this situation where you have no choice mm-hmm. because otherwise it's gonna be another week of you up there right. watching paint dry literally and so um you know basically when it comes down to it the balance is really just figuring out how to balance each year and be gracious and patient with myself as I learn, um, you know, and as I, and as I grow and challenge myself, I will also hopefully learn from other business owners like yourself by being transparent and open and, and not acting like I've got it all figured out because then I'm never going to grow, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you're closed off, you know, I figured it out or just kind of hiding in your own stubbornness, um, unfortunately, not only do you miss out on thriving, but you also miss out on a shared experience with somebody else who's either been in your shoes before 
or has a really good idea and something to help you out. So I feel like that's my big lesson in this year for sure. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's so important and it is, I mean, nobody in a entrepreneurial role has it all figured out. Um, I think that's impossible one because Mm -hmm not to mention the cha- the times are changing so fast. Like nobody right. knows what's going to happen. Never. Like, social media made my job possible and assumingly parts of yours as well. Yeah, um, right. That for our parents' generation, like never would have even been an option. And mm-hmm. um, I think, yeah, the world's changing so rapidly. And when you're in an entrepreneurial role like with you with your wellness and your art you have to learn by failing sometimes and that's the only way to get better Mm -hmm. is to mess up and be like wow I'm never gonna do that again so Mm -hmm. um it sounds like you're really taking that on in stride and then also to your point of like double coat like it's like what areas of what I do are like the special sauce that make it like 100% unique to me that I always need to have my hands on and then what areas are more generic that I can delegate. Mm -hmm. And that is like, Mm -hmm. I have played around with that so much in the last few years. And I've delegated things that after delegating them, I like redo them. I'm like, no, actually this thing I have to do. And then I've been doing things that I'm like, oh, I actually didn't need to be doing that thing. I could have been delegating it all along. So it's like such a like Mm -hmm. balancing act of all of it. You're so right. I'm so glad you shared that with me. Now I'm going to pick your brain from here on out about all of those (laughs) things because God, if I don't have to make those mistakes five more times, that would be awesome. Because your girl does just not have that much energy left at the end of the day for making more mistakes, you know? So, yeah. oh man. And how do you, like, how do you find time for yourself amongst your two businesses? Mm. And because obviously, mm-hmm. like, wellness is so important to you, art's so important. But do you ever find, like, you need or do you have other avenues that, like, fill you up? I'm an extrovert introvert. So or an introvert and extrovert. And um, so really my time um, to hone in and to have that, like, that solo time is so essential for me. So I have these, I have like morning chills is what I call them, where I have a specific routine that I run through for myself. Just um, it's uh, where I wake up and I have some breathing time. Um, I have a moment of like silence and just like feeling my body, feeling the connection to myself and um, like clearing my mind of anything negative that I've still held on to and uh, finding an intention or something positively focused for my day. And then I do this thing called EFT, which because I have, I have anxiety, I'm sure everybody does, um, but for myself, just not my coping mechanism, but my practice of um, regulating my uh, my nervous system is I do this thing called EFT. It's emotional freedom technique where you basically tap certain pressure points on your on your body, and you repeat certain phrases to um, basically build awareness on how you're feeling. And like, okay, you feel that way, and then it calms you actually, and it's amazing um, when I start my day pretty much every day that way. Um, I feel so much better right and then I can move into my day without stress I'm like oh I forgot this I didn't you know how when you're in a hurry you forget things like I was feeling like that would happen to me a lot I'm like I'm calm I don't forget things I don't have to double do things I don't have to you know be in a constant state of stress so that's really important for my mental health yeah. and then did you learn that career, somewhere I Just, did yeah I know mm-hmm. it's like something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so yeah the it's the acupressure point so yeah middle forehead temple underneath your nose um chin uh collarbone and underneath your armpit and then you just repeat that about five to seven times per acupressure point um you can also do the tap on uh, called the karate chop really good um love mm-hmm. that one and then there's also ear pulls you can also do lymph drainage where you just kind of pull on your lymph different spots um, sometimes, and I know it's maybe weird, but sometimes I just rub underneath my armpits. It's just actually like just uh, another lymph spot, but there's a lot of tension that gets held there. So you're actually able, it's almost like giving yourself a hug. Um, 
which is another really important one, uh, which is self-love and self-love technique. And I do this because I practice yoga every day. And that's for my like physical health. Um, I do hands on my heart, which is the two palms facing your heart. It simulates the same sensation as giving a hug to someone and receiving a hug. Um, if you hold it here for you know, about a minute of breathing, um, there's this warmth that happens through you and around you. Um, again, the same as a hug that you are basically giving comfort and connection to someone, which is yourself, back to yourself. Um, and that in itself is so, so healing for me, especially in those moments where you're feeling like, oh my God, I'm so alone. I'm the only one doing this. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, you're not. You're good. You're fine. You're actually connected. You're not alone. Mm -hmm. And you've got this. So that one's really important. And, um, and obviously my yoga practice daily, and, um, that's in, in usually the middle part of my day. I also walk a lot and I'll go to the gym at night on certain days of the week. I have a root, I have very set routine, like very set routine. Mm -hmm. And, and then I have my drawing time. My drawing time is usually in the morning. Um, I don't drink coffee anymore. So I have tea, um, I'll have like matcha or I'll have like an herbal tea and I'll, um, and I'll do my drawing time, which is really not like a structured, like it's not for work. It'll be something that's just whatever I want to draw. And usually I'll choose um, a theme for that month. And so if I'm like, uh, let's do um, uh, cats. Cats, will, it'll be my month. I'll do cats all every day. And some little doodle doesn't have to look the same every day, but I'm just going to do cats. So mm -hmm. that is all in my sketch pad. Like a, and I, I do a lot of iPad work, but I really like the feeling of touching a real pen and a real piece of paper. So I have sketch pads that I fill up and I usually hand, uh, part of my routine is also giving love and practicing um, non-attachment. And so every time I draw something, I give it away. So I have a notepad, but it doesn't really have that much in it because I give everything away. So like, uh, I'll go to the coffee shop and I'll draw. It's always been a part of my practice. I'll do my little drawing, I'll have my tea, and then I'll give my drawing to the barista or I'll leave it at the table. Like, I'm going to make one tomorrow. I don't need it. It's not going to be love the only that. time I no, ever make something. That's such a good idea. <laughs> it's in this like capitalist system of existing as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we need to like claim our worth and get paid for our time and like to support our lifestyle, but I feel like that's so important. And I love that idea of like giving mm -hmm. your sketches away because we don't want to be, I, I feel like as artists that are kind of like striving for like a better world, it's like, we don't want to mm -hmm. be hoarding. We don't want to be like, we want to share and make the world a better place. And like, that is so important. So I really love that concept. I might have to yeah, try that definitely. myself. <laughs> it's actually really, I find that um, it's the whole reason like I love art is because yeah. it's an expression of whatever that moment had to help had to hold for the person who created it and for the person who is viewing it and for the person who keeps it like it's it has this beautiful um it has its own aura so say that I was creating and I was in a really bad mood giving that away I would be like oh that has bad energy so I think about it before I go in and I'm like, so I clear my energy before I draw it because I know I'm going to give it away. And I'm just like, all right, like, what's my intent here? I'm like, just, this is your time, girl. Like, mm -hmm. I love the practice of drawing, you know, I just mm -hmm. like love creating. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just doing the thing I love doing. And then all of a sudden, when I start creating and I make something, it has good energy. And when I give it to somebody, it's that same thing. They might say, oh, thanks, and move on to their life. It doesn't matter. Or I just keep it at the table. And I, if I never see them again, or if I don't know who took it, or if it got thrown away, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because the, the chance that somebody did get it and it made their day a little better is good enough for me. You know, like it's, it's karma at the end of the day. Like we should be doing something good with the gifts that we're given. And the gifts are sometimes just our time. Like, you know, saying hi to somebody and not just like, there's these I, I, baristas are like a thing for me, like, or people in service, like working at, um, working in, uh, in service, customer service at all. I'm like, you're literally a person. That's all. 
I am going to give you attention as a person. How's your day? How are things going? Da, da, da. Like, remember some notes about them. Go to the same places. I always go to the same places. I know all their names and I make sure that I connect with them. Like, oh, isn't it? Didn't you just go to um, the coast this weekend? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. How was it? You know, just like remembering little bits. It's time that you spend on this world in this life that hopefully you make the best of and you share goodness in some way. If you're not doing that for yourself, it's hard to give that away authentically. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like when um, when I'm able to have, like I said, this practice of starting off my day, de- just regulating my nervous system, bringing it down, practicing self-love, taking care of my body, creating and then connecting with others and then repeating that cycle I feel like oh my God, I'm like I feel so full you know mm-hmm. so I, I do get so I do to your point I do recharge but if I don't have one of those things in my day like I do feel I do feel a little less connected right so if yeah. I had seen no one that day if I hadn't drawn if I hadn't taken care of my body I would just have those two things. I'd be, I'd be okay, but I'd feel a little empty, to be honest. Yeah. So I just try and make there be some of a little bit, even just a little bit, even if I have a really busy day, can I find those five elements and just like pour into it with whatever I have in the best way I can, you know? So, um, yeah. Make the I most love of that. It. It, that's such a mm-hmm. cool practice and so well-defined, like, most people don't have something like Mm -hmm. that they're that clear on that makes them feel good. And so that just shows Mm -hmm. your level of self-awareness and kind of how that feeds and fuels the rest of your endeavors and like how that supports everything you're doing. Like it makes Mm -hmm. sense why you're so successful. Um, And it's interesting too, how I asked you, like, what do you do for yourself still has to do with giving something back to other people, Mm -hmm. which is so cool to hear. Um, and you mentioned something, um, in this where you're like, before I draw, I clear my energy. Does the, is that a different technique than like the tapping and like your morning routine? Or is that something different? Cause I've thought about that too. Like when I'm creating, I mean, if I'm just having a bad day and I'm creating, sometimes the art can actually shift my mood, but sometimes it's like, because I'm just feeling so negative, it, the art looks bad and like, I don't like what I've created. So can you talk a little bit more about that? I'm glad that you also feel that way. And I'm not the only one um, (laughs) because I'm like, man, I hate that when I'm not feeling good. I'm already like, it's, it's like art is so connected to how we feel, which sometimes fuels a really interesting perspective on our inner self, right? Which is for some people, it works great. I prefer to create art from my um from my my uh light heart rather mm-hmm. than my dark heart and that might shift one day maybe I'll go into a, a period of creating like sorrowful and deep um you know hurtful art like hurt you know when I've been hurt or sad which is totally great I'm not in that chapter of my life right now so I'm, I'm creating from this space of light and sharing light so one way that I do clear my energy wow. is I just write I'll just write like just a really quick, like couple, maybe like five minutes or something or less. It's about like how I'm feeling. And usually when I read it, I'm like, oh, it's because I think a lot of times, and this is like scientifically proven that when you let things ruminate in your mind for too long, it actually creates more stress and, and you can't get out. It's a loop. And um, it's not always just stress. Sometimes it is a negative emotion or feeling, but when you put it down onto paper, you write it out, you read your words, it now doesn't have power over you because you see it in a very logical way rather than emotional way. So you go from an emotional state to a very logical state. And so it, it's just like that. That's why as artists, we want to put things down because it's all up here. And then the moment we put it down, like, oh, there it is. And if we don't like it, we just go again and we go, okay, let me retransfer it. So it's mm-hmm. the same thing with emotion and with logic. So you're like, okay, I feel all these emotions. Well, let me put it down. Let me write it down, read it out. Okay, you know what? It's all good. It's all good. And then I intend. So I choose an intention. Sometimes I'll write it on the piece of paper that I'm about to draw on and I'll just be like, have a good day. Okay. So 
that that's my intention. And then I'll start drawing something that makes me feel like, have a good day. So if it's cats, that cat is having a good ass day. Like that cat is having coffee. That cat has got rainbows and it's got like little butterflies hanging out. And like, that's what I'm going to draw. So it's kind of like, it's clear your energy by putting it down and then creating an intention around what you're going to create has set the stage for something entirely different in this emotionally heightened space where you can't feel like you even know what it is. You're just upset. You know how there's that, I've said it before plenty of times. I just don't know why I'm so upset. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. I just don't know. It's like, yeah, you do. You just have to write it down because it's there. You mm -hmm. do. And, and sometimes it's like one thing and then it's a bunch of things. And once you're out there, though, you can start to handle it. You can start to deal with it. But until you put it down on paper, it's just going to keep bothering you. And I'm not going to it. So that's, yeah. that's my that's my way. Um, yeah. So like kind of a journaling it, practice, too. It is. Yeah. 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 Mm. Wow. And I I'm, love that. I'm, that's really cool. <laughs> it's really helpful. Yeah, for sure. I've gone back sometimes and I've read my I don't ha I don't give people my journal. Writings. Yeah. Um, I you don't tell them all the horrible things you're feeling. No, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. But I've gone back and read them before. And it's interesting because um, when I look at what I was feeling at the time or what was plaguing me, it is very situational. Um, they're not always the same. They're, they're very much like where I was, what I was doing at the time, who I was spending time with, where I was um, not spending time with myself or not doing the things that I know bring me joy. I was letting my thoughts ruminate longer in this feeling about how somebody was making me feel or I didn't, you know, it's just like a lack of or like um, feeling like I'm not enough or it's like, you know, those thoughts, um, but specifically with someone or something that I felt like I didn't have control over. And what's interesting, every single time I look back, I was like, oh, but I, but I did move on. I got, I got over it. I got better. Everything was fine. So again, I look back and I'm like, when I feel those times, they're not going to last forever. I will, I will get over that. Just like I yeah. always have, just like I always will. So even in the biggest stress times, like, I don't think I'm going to get this done. I could probably go back to my journal and figure out another time that I said that. And I got over it not the same exact situation but it's a very similar thing you know what I mean yeah so. it's like those feelings can feel so real and all-consuming and like yeah. anxiety too because I have anxiety can right. like spiral you your brain to make you feel like I feel like I feel anxiety in my chest but it's like it just feels like it's never gonna leave and it's always gonna be this mm -hmm. way and it like takes over and so it sounds like you've got a really solid practice of getting it a way to like get it out of your body almost and like into paper yeah on paper yeah. and then move on with your day and go on to all the really important things that you have to do in life. Right, and, right, right. Because I feel like there's that thing when people are like, oh, because you seem like a super happy, positive person, but there's like the type of positivity that's like, you're not even acknowledging those hard things. You're just like right, right. brushing them under the rug, but like that's going to build up eventually and you're going to have to deal with that eventually. It so does. it seems like yeah. you've got a good way of like acknowledging it and then like choosing to focus on the positivity and the light, which is right, super cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing that. And thank you for being open about your anxiety too, because I wouldn't know that you seem like such a happy, positive person as well. So it's like, like you said, it's the acknowledgement of it and the work to um, to also choose the, the positive path. I think I need to pick my journal practice back up too. And this is inspiring me, but something that I found is I'm like super verbal processor. So usually mm -hmm, like what mm -hmm. I'm saying is like how I'm getting it out of my, like I need, right, like, right. it's really important to have people in my life that I trust as like good sounding boards that can like listen yeah, because yeah. like a way that I get it out is like by talking and writing. Sometimes I confuse myself. Well, I'm Gemini. Yeah, so I just I confuse that. myself like all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> do you know what your um, sun sign is? Or obviously you do. Uh, when is your birthday? Well, I'm a Sagittarius okay. through and through, I would say pretty mm -hmm. pretty much like uh quintessential sag so it sounds like you're pretty quintessential gem yes i've got like the rising <laughs> sign too is gemini yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a lot of gemini going on yeah yeah i think i'm the sag sag too okay so that's uh a lot of the um like yeah you're a people person but you're also like very specific 
and then you're like I will literally do it all myself mm-hmm. I will go when I want I will do what I want to do but like I also want to be like loved and I want to like travel and adventure and I'm spontaneous but totally not spontaneous they're very I would say Nudge theories are very um like um complex Mm -hmm. uh because it's it's like what I want makes sense in the moment and I will not regret it but no one else understands it yeah like you're like I'm taking the risk and this is gonna be great and everyone's like okay are you sure that that part that part (laughs) yeah everything else everyone else is scared for you like I'm absolutely not scared I got this um but yeah some and and you look back and like I would have never regretted any of it yeah exactly the way it was supposed to go so but yeah that's a very I'm a very sad sad you're a very Gemini Gemini I love yeah, girl girl we're right across the <laughs> zodiac wheel from each other so it's like a good balance <laughs> I'm excited mm-hmm. for your year ahead and like to follow yeah. along you've got so much coming up well right back at you and you inspire me so much with being able to like get your art out there and in so many different ways too I just love how you go from your paintings to then creating these beautiful like designs like almost like graphic designs that you're translating into all these different products which is super (laughs) inspiring for myself as an artist who aside from muraling it's like diving into the art art side of things and really um making a a product to to sell um (laughs) Oh, so exhausting! I was like, I would rather paint a whole mural than I would sell fifty prints. I don't know what it is. It's a mental yeah. block, right? So for me, I'm like, why would they want to buy? Like, why would anybody want to buy this? I have no idea why they want to. You know, and that's mm-hmm. the, the mental. And I think you oh. totally have to like listen to that too, and like, I mean, yeah. determine if that energetics is like. Is that fear that you don't want to be selling product like prints or is it actually like energetically it doesn't feel right? Because I think there's like so many avenues you can go in the world of art. And like I've tried, I've made apparel, I've made hats. Like I don't do that stuff anymore. And like energetically that started to become a drain. So I think it is really important to like stick with, yeah, obviously we have to pay our bills. That's a great point. Take care of yourself. But like you don't have Mm -hmm. to do it all and it's better like – you're so good at muraling yeah. and I'm not saying stay that there and by any means do what interests you. Don't feel like you have to do stuff just because other artists oh, are doing absolutely. it. Absolutely. Obviously. I'm sure oh. you already know that, but like, that's what I tell no. myself too. Cause it's so hard when you see other people succeeding and you're like, I should be doing that. Why am I not doing that? And like, you know, it's me needing to get to the, like, I, I it's almost like the scalability. Like I'm really, really bad about, being the one to print out the stuff and send it to people and that is the hardest part for me Mm -hmm. so um or choosing the prints like I know this sounds so trivial it's it's that ridiculous for me in my head of doing that kind of work I don't I cannot even because I feel like on the other side of it is me having to do more steps and I'm a robot Mm -hmm. and I only have a certain amount of steps that are like programmable at one time and so um and that's it in my own head you know and so when I'm doing these two splits on my businesses me taking the time to build that template for me to do that that one uh not even skill but that one part of the job right is sometimes it's a, it's a, a bit much I mean, you're, I see you over here busting out huge murals for like big clients. And I'm like, how is she doing all of that? Like, that's amazing. So, I mean, (laughs) I think, um, yeah, going with what's flowing and like also trusting, like, you'll know when it's time to expand into the next endeavor and like, it'll be, it'll be clear and, and ready. But if you ever want to talk more about making more products with your art, I'm happy to chat oh, further yeah, and for sure share Sounds more like another podcast yeah another podcast 100 <laughs> percent um well so great chatting with you today thank you so much for coming on and i'd love to connect in person one day if it lines up oh yeah we will for sure yeah and good luck with your upcoming year and stay in touch all right thanks again yeah